you're here because you're interested, obviously, in, in channeling, in channeled writing. In this session, we're going to talk about channeling, and we're going to talk about why writing is such a powerful way of connecting with channeling. So we'll, we'll talk about what channeling actually is, and then why writing specifically is really powerful and important. And then we're going to talk about how you can uh, get to a place where you can just access that knowledge, that, you know, that connection within yourself regularly and consistently. Um, so before we get started, though, we need to be kind of on the same page about, what, about one thing, right? And that one thing is that you are not just a physical body. If you're at this expo, at this convention, you probably know that already, right? You have a connection with that non-physical part of you. But without that agreement, channeling really makes no sense at all. So we have to be in agreement with each other that you are more than your physical body. In fact, you are, as a human being, two things. You are the human, you're that physical human, and as the physical human, you function and operate in the physical world, right? And the physical human part of you needs maintenance. It's limited by senses, by time, by space. It's limited by, uh, you know, its imagination, its cognitive abilities. It's limited by all sorts of things. And those limitations are wonderful because Without those limitations, ultimately, we can't create. We can't have problems to solve. We can't have questions to answer. So those limitations are really quite amazing. But beyond the physical, you are also the non-physical uh, being, right? So the human being is also the being. So that non-physical part of you does not have any limitations. It doesn't have... Uh, you know, it knows everything, it understands everything, it is omniscient, it exists in all space, in all time. You know, if you have somebody who has passed, you know, you can call on their non-physical essence and they can be there, they can show up for you, even though they may be incarnated in another body. So the non-physical part of us doesn't, is not limited by anything. It actually comes into a limited experience in order to experience physical creation, right? So that communication between the non-physical and the physical is happening constantly. And channeling is essentially closing the gap. It's me as a human getting closer to me as a being and then closing that gap and then hearing the messages of my being. Now, there's that first step is hearing those messages, receiving those messages, and then I have to do something with those messages. I have to translate them into a form that makes sense to the physical world that I live in, right? So that's what channeling is, it's essentially uh, translating messages that we receive from the non-physical part of ourselves into a form that makes sense in the physical world. Now, channeling take, can take a lot of different forms, right? So for me, it's writing, it's words. I receive those the, the messages and then I translate them into words. For someone else, it might be visual, it might be a painting, it might be drawings, doodles. For someone else, it might be designing something or uh, even creating a company, a business, something, some innovation comes to them, right? For somebody else still, it might be climbing a mountain or uh, rowing across the Atlantic, right? So all of these are us translating the messages of the divine within us, the non-physical within us. And by the way, you can call that anything you want. You can call it your inner being. You can call it your um, higher self, your soul, 
God, Christ consciousness, you know, the universe, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's the non-physical part of you. It's the omniscient, all-knowing part of you, right? So, but writing in particular is very powerful in training us how to listen for and actually hear and receive those messages. And when we start to write in this very deliberate way, we start to connect uh, ourselves with, with the non-physical, right? We start to close that gap, just by and by, just close that gap. That's the purpose of this, right? So why writing? I'm gonna give you three main reasons why writing is so powerful. When we write, and by writing I mean you're physically, literally writing by hand, not typing on a computer, but writing by hand, right? Because what happens is when you're writing by hand, you're actually activating the right and left hemispheres of your brain simultaneously. So you're closing the gap between the two hemispheres of your brain. And that's really uh, important because uh, the different hemispheres of your brain connect you to the different parts of the human being. Your left hemisphere is where you experience the human physical experience, right? So it's connected to the linear time, it's connected to a language, um, our cognitive abilities, you know, problem solving in the human sense, right? So our identity, our, our sense of self in the physical body is formed in the left hemisphere of our brain. Uh, when Dr. Jill Bolt Taylor, how many of you know about Dr. Jill Bolt Taylor? She wrote My Stroke of Insight. Her recent book is called Whole Brain Living. So she had a stroke. She was a neuroscientist, Harvard trained. Amazing TED Talk, amazing TED Talk, right? So when she had the stroke in the left hemisphere of her brain that basically shut down her entire left brain, she was left with the right hemisphere, right? And there she experienced a complete death of her identity as a small human self. She experienced complete bliss. She experienced complete connection to the universe. Uh, she no longer could perceive herself as separate from the universe. And in her latest book, Whole Brain Living, she talks about how our connection to the divine, to our soul, to our inner being, is experienced in the right side of our brain, in the right hemisphere of our brain. Incredible book to read if, uh, if you're interested in this stuff. But when we're... Uh, writing by hand, we close that gap because we are activating our right and left hemispheres at the same time, simultaneously, right? So now my, my human self, the part of me that's connected to language and to identity, to what I do for a living and how, uh, you know, I uh, show up today here and what I'm wearing and, and my name and my age and my education and all of that stuff gets connected to the part of me that knows we are all one. That energy that flows through me that is the same energy that created the physical universe, it's the same energy that flows through you and we are all one, right? So physiologically, when we write, we start to close that gap. That's why writing is really important. Second reason writing is really, really important is that when we are writing, we are focusing all of the mind chatter down. It's almost like all the mind chatter is here, when you're writing, you have to focus on the next word that you're writing. So it's almost like you take all of that mind chatter and you put it through a funnel. You put it through a funnel and the stream, this very clean stream has to come out of there, right? So what happens when I quiet that mind chatter down, when I, when I bring it down and turn it into 
one stream, focus it down. What happens there is my brain waves start to move from high beta waves that are associated with that mind chatter, with the stress, right? The high beta, we don't, we don't want to be there. That's, there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of runaway thoughts that we can't control. So I start slowing my brain waves down into low beta, into alpha waves, and eventually into theta waves. Channeling happens, that connection starts to happen in the low alpha and theta waves, brain waves. So writing helps us get there because it starts to kind of slow everything down, slow down the mind chatter. The third thing that writing does, especially if I am stuck in thought patterns that are keeping me from being able to channel, right, uh, which are essentially negative thought patterns, things that, that are keeping me from feeling good, okay? So when I write, when I write, by hand, I start labeling, right? I start labeling what's happening and what I'm feeling. And then this is journaling specifically. Why journaling is so powerful is because as I label, I'm able to release whatever is present, whatever is coming up, right? And that's, Brene Brown talks about this in her book, um, uh, Daring Greatly, right? So. And she talks about it specifically with emotions related to shame and guilt. You know, when we start labeling things that are coming up, we take the power away from them and we're able to release them. Why is that important? That's important because as I do that, as I start to release those emotions and the thought patterns that are keeping me from feeling good, my physical vibration starts to rise. And as my physical vibration starts to rise, I start feeling better. I start experiencing better emotions. I start getting into a place of clarity, of connection, of hopefulness, of uh, maybe even happiness, bliss, joy. These are the emotions that we want to foster within ourselves if we want to connect with the non-physical part of us. Because that non-physical being part of the human being exists at this high vibrational, high frequency places. It, it is the energy of love. It's the energy of freedom. So if I want to uh, communicate with that part of me that is pure, infinite, unconditional energy of love, of freedom, of clarity, I have to get myself to that place. It's not going to come to me. I have to get myself to that place so I can hear it, okay? So when we're channeling, when I am actively trying to listen to and receive these messages and translate them into a form that makes sense, I, my ability to do that depends on my ability to kind of hear and identify the voice that is there, that's, that's coming. And that comes with time, it comes with connection, it comes with fostering uh, positive, uh, high vibrational emotions within myself, it comes with uh, tools that help me lower my brain waves into those alpha and theta brain waves, it comes uh, with uh, my uh, attempts at continually closing that gap within myself, doing things that, that help me do that. And, and in the how section of this talk, uh, I, I'll, I'll give you some tools that, that help me get to that place, okay? But when I say, uh, I, I, want, I do wanna give you an analogy here. It's like my, my boyfriend who's sitting right here, he's Mexican, okay? And I, have been learning Spanish on Duolingo. The app tells me I have about 800 words I've learned, but if he starts to tell me a story in Spanish, right, I will catch maybe one out of 10 words. And then I'll start 
kind of making up my own story based on what I think he meant. That's not unlike channeling. Our inner being, that non-physical part of us, is continually, continually giving us knowledge, just constantly. That communication is constant. And I don't mean constant like, you know, um, you have a spouse or a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you're like, oh, they're constantly messaging me. They're not constantly messaging you, right? Because unless it's every second of every single day, they're not constantly messaging you, which is how your inner being talks to you. It's constantly, constantly, constantly sending you messages, okay? But your ability to receive depends on how close are you to those messages, right? It's like I can be standing downstairs and yelling messages at you, and you're up here, you're not gonna hear me, right? So I have to, you have to, if I'm selling, if I'm your inner being and I'm yelling, you have to physically come to my vicinity. So we have to physically go to the vicinity of that inner being, of the non physical part of us, in order to hear it. And then, we have to train ourselves to actually hear those messages, to understand those messages. I have to go stand in front of him so I can hear what he's saying. I can't be like, you know, five houses down. And then I have to learn Spanish so I can understand, right? Now, our human self and the non-physical, they, they talk to us in different ways. Okay, so humans, as the human self, we communicate in information. We share information. I'm constantly collecting information because I have all these limitations about me, right? Um, I'm, I'm filling in the gaps with pieces of information. And I'm piecing those pieces of information together to create more more knowledge and more information around whatever this is, right? But it's never a full picture that I have. I don't ever really have a full picture because I am limited by my senses. When we leave this room, all of us will have had different experiences, right? Because we're limited by our senses, which force us to create a hierarchy of of information within ourselves based on what's important to us. Our inner being communicates in knowledge. It knows everything about everything in all space and all time. And it gives you everything about everything in all space and all time. It's like it comes to you and I come to you and I give you this big giant block of gold. Right? It's, it's all the knowledge, all of the knowledge. Again, my ability to receive it, I have to be in its proximity and I have to willingly receive it, but then I have to translate that block of gold into something that makes sense. So I might take that block of gold and make a big bulky necklace out of it. You might take it and turn it into a dainty little necklace. Someone else may turn it into an earring or a bracelet or a ring. Someone else turns it into gold teeth or wires. You give it to this guy, he turns it into a little robot. You know, so everyone, depending on our own individual preferences and what we have decided is important to us and interesting to us, will take that block and turn it into something that we can share with the world, right? Something that makes sense to us, that, that lights us up, and, and all of those preferences come from all of the different pieces of information we've gathered and all the different cool ways we have put those pieces of information together for ourselves. That is the beauty of our diversity, right? So because it creates this perfect system where all of us are receiving the same message, but we're creating billions upon billions of different forms of expression out of the same exact message. I mean, that's, that's beautiful, right? That's, that's beautiful. So 
You receive that information and you turn it into something that is of value to you. It's, it's this process. That's essentially what channeling is. You receive information from the non-physical part of you and then you turn it into something that is of value and interest to you. That's why at the beginning I said, channeling can take many forms, right? So it can be a painting, it can be a hike, it can be uh, you know, going down to the beach, remodeling your dream house, uh, selling everything and going on a road trip. It can take many forms, right? It can also take the form of writing, which is, what we're doing here. So how do we receive that information? We have to close the gap, so we have to move to where our inner being is. So that means we raise our vibration, lower our brain waves. Easy ways to do that. Drink a big glass of water. Take three deep breaths like we did at the beginning of this. Now, studies actually show that when we are stressed out, we deprive ourselves of water and of air. We'll hold, how long can you live without air? Minutes. So when we're stressed, when we're writing emails and we're at work and we're really stressed, people hold their breath. They literally hold their breath. And that, what does that do? That feeds your stress because you're not oxygenating your body, right? You're not oxygenating your brain. So three deep breaths immediately going to raise your vibration. Why water? When we are uh, not feeling good, when we are in those uh, negative thought patterns, negative emotional patterns. We also deprive ourselves of water. How long can you live without water? Days, right? Just a few days. After air, it's the next thing, right? So drinking a big glass of water when you are not feeling very well is going to raise your vibration. It's going to, you are made mostly of water. Those are two simple, simple things. And then what else do you do that raises your vibration specifically? The question, what can I do today that is fun for me? Is a very important and powerful question. And, I, and when you ask yourself that question, when you're not feeling well, when you've been upset or depressed or sad for a little while, it's almost an impossible question to answer. Almost impossible, but very important question because the moment you ask that, you're starting to connect with yourself, right? You're starting to stop that downward spiral and come back. Why is it so important? Uh, I, I keep saying when you're in a negative place, bringing yourself up, because it's impossible to channel. If your inner being is here, feeling really good and high and whatever and wonderful, and you are over here feeling lost and confused and sad and angry, and you're like, I just need a message. I just need a message. I just need to know. I need to know you're not gonna know. You need to get yourself from here to there so that you can hear the messages, right? So very important to stop that downward spiral. And these, these small tools, they, they're very simple, but they're very powerful. Drink a glass of water, take three deep breaths. You start inching your way that way. What can I do today? that is fun for me, and then do it, gratitude. You do gratitude three days in a row, it raises your vibration. So now you're starting to close that gap. Eventually, 
you close that gap enough, you start to really hear those messages. And then you can practice that second part, which is how can I, uh, is this, whose voice is this first of all? And how can I, uh, you know, hear it, actually receive it, right? So what are some other things you can do to close that gap? Meditation. Meditation, I think, is one of those words that sometimes um, induces anxiety in people. <laughs> because it's like, I've tried that. It doesn't work. You know, I couldn't stop my thoughts. The goal of meditation is not to stop your thoughts. Meditation is like a gym for your mind. Okay, so, so meditation, I'll, I'll just run through it very briefly. Uh, the, the way meditation works, the way you gain control over your thoughts in meditation is that you sit first of all and you identify a home base. A home base is where you're going to, for the next two minutes, five minutes, whatever it is, for the next five minutes, I am going to focus my attention on this specific thing. So that home base can be your breath flowing in and out of your nostrils. That's called Anapana meditation. It can be the sensations of my body. That's called Vipassana meditation. It can be a mantra that you say over and over. That's TM, transcendental meditation. It doesn't matter where you focus your attention. The, the thing that's important is for the next five minutes, while my, so you can set your timer so you don't feel restless, right? Set your timer for five minutes. Five minutes is enough. And for these next five minutes, I'm going to focus on this home base. So then what happens? You sit down, immediately you have thoughts. You're focusing on your breath. Immediately you have thoughts. When you have that thought in meditation, and you become aware that your attention has gone from your breath or the mantra into the thought. The moment you become aware, the most powerful moment of your life, because you separate your identity from the thought. You suddenly become the observer of the thought. You're the thinker of the thought. You are no longer identified with the thought as who you are. And then what happens in meditation? As the thinker, as the observer, as you can become a deliberate chooser. And what do you choose in meditation? You choose, first of all, to let go of that thought. Hey, that's interesting. I was just thinking of my third grade, uh, you know, a teacher, whatever. I can think about that later. I'm going to choose to let it go. Let's just see it float away. Now what happens? Consciously, I bring my focus back to my home base. Whether it was my breath flowing in and out of my nostrils, whether it was, um, you know, the mantra that I was saying, or it was the music I was listening to, it doesn't matter. What matters is that I chose to let go of this thought and I chose to come back to that home base. Powerful. This is ultimately the basis for deliberate creation, right? When we create deliberately, we are choosing the thoughts that we want to think. This is when we create by default, the thoughts are choosing us. We're creating all the time. We're creating constantly. But when we create by default, we go down these rabbit holes of anxiety and fear. We could because by default, whatever happens to be most active within us is what we end up creating, right? And what happens to be most active within most of us is what we fear, negative ideation, what could possibly go wrong, right? But in meditation, I'm training myself to become aware of the thought. I'm training myself to let go of the thought that I don't want to be thinking. 
and I'm training myself to deliberately choose to bring my attention to a specific place. It's my choice, right? So now I can choose to prioritize thoughts that feel better. Someone cuts me off on the freeway and I go down the rabbit hole of, what a jerk, you know, like everybody always cuts me off. It's like I'm invisible, like all the stories. Oh, wait, I'm, that's interesting. My, my mind just went there. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling a lot of anxiety because of that. Uh, how else can I look at the situation? Can I let go of that story? Okay, I let go of that story. How can I look at the situation that makes me feel better? Well, maybe, I don't know, he, his wife is in labor and he's trying to get to the, uh, to the hospital, you know, like whatever it is. I close the gap. I close the gap. Very powerful meditation is. Um, our self-talk is really important. So when, if you want to channel Negative self-talk becomes a hindrance. It becomes a hindrance. So your words are powerful, whether they're directed at yourself or at other people. But if you're in the habit of beating yourself up, you know, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? You know, you got to cut that out. You got to cut that out. Because every time you do that, you're opening the gap. You're creating more space. Right? If you're gossiping, oh, did you hear what you know Julie said to Rebecca the other day? You know? You're opening the gap. If you have negative ideations about the future, oh my gosh, I'm so gonna get fired, you know, I can't believe blah blah blah. Opening the gap. How else can I look at the situation? How else can I look at it that closes the gap, that doesn't open it, right? So you got to cut out the stuff that get you away from your inner being and start doing things and prioritizing things that get you closer to your inner being. That's at the core of channeling, right? Because we have to get into the proximity in order to hear those messages. So you sit and you're in a good place. You've been practicing this stuff. You're feeling better and better all the time. Your friends are starting to hate you because you're happy all the time, you know, and, and or they're like, what are you doing? And you're like, I'm closing the gap. I'm closing the gap. I'm I'm trying to channel, so I need to feel good, you know? And then you sit down. So what's the, what's the process of sitting down? Let's talk about the how of it, okay? So you sit down, and first of all, I suggest start always with a big glass of water and three deep breaths. Easily, that'll bump your vibration up, no matter where you are, because you are caring about your body. You are caring about the physical you, right? And you are giving your body the resources that it absolutely needs. So you're giving it water and you're giving it air, oxygen, breath. Start with that. Then, uh, the next thing you want to do is raise your vibration even more. Bump it up. Easiest way, gratitude. By far the most underrated, easiest way to just bump your vibration at any moment in time. Gratitude. Now, gratitude sometimes gets monotonous for people. They're like, oh, I would have... Try to challenge yourself. You know, like, uh, I'm grateful for uh, this beautiful day. What about this beautiful day am I grateful for? I'm grateful that on this beautiful day, uh, I'm able to go out and walk in the sun. You know, what about that am I grateful for? Right? I I'm grateful that I am able to walk. You know, that, that the sun shines on me and it 
gives me vitamin D. I don't know, maybe you have to take vitamin D pills because I live in California. You know, like just challenge yourself. Just get into this habit of writing down and expressing gratitude for yourself, for other people, you know, connecting on that deep level. The gratitude is going to expand in your life everything that you appreciate. So you had your big glass of water, you took three deep breaths, you wrote down five things you're grateful for, and now what? Now you gotta ground yourself. Come into your physical body. Grounding basically just means coming into the present moment, coming into the physical body. Just as you're breathing, notice your body, where it is, and not with the intention of needing to change anything. Your body where you are is perfect exactly. Just accept it in that moment, right? And then I like to say an intention. If there's a specific question that I have, I'll speak it at that point. If there is something specific that I'm looking for, I'll, I'll say it. And the thing is, once you say it, once you ask your question, don't keep asking it. Because in the next phase, you gotta listen, right? So I'll, I'll say my question and then I'll set an intention for myself. And you can, whatever you believe in, if you believe in God, if you believe in angels, you can, if you believe in your guides, uh, whoever you believe in, you can, you can bring them into this process. You can say, dear God, or dear, my dear angels, my guides, um, if there's a specific person that you connect with, you can call on them, but help guide me. Help me connect deeply through the energy of love. Always set an intention of love because that's where your inner being is. Let the messages of love, of connection come through, come through me. Turn me into a vessel so I can hear with clarity. Help give me the words that will express the knowledge. Help me hear you. Help me hear the messages of my inner being. Whatever it is that you are maybe wanting to set that intention for, and there's no right or wrong. It's basically what is present for you in that moment, right? So you set that intention and then we got to listen, the listening. I like to listen, meditate in silence, but I like to use one of two methods. One is Eckhart Tolle's uh, listening to the silence between sounds. That one is so powerful for me. It's just, it's literally, you're trying to catch the silence between sounds. And your home base in that meditation is that silence. It's continually coming back to the silence. The other one is uh, Abraham Hicks talks about listening to a hum of an air conditioner. You know, so you isolate a sound in the room and you just listen for that, right? And something will happen as you do this. And, you can do it for 10 minutes, for 15 minutes. I would set a timer so that you, you're not antsy. Because sometimes when we don't set a timer, we start getting like, oh, I need to get up. I need, how long have I been sitting? You know, like all these thoughts start to go. But if you, have a set, if you have a timer, it takes all of that pressure off, right? So 15 minutes, 10 minutes, sit and just listen. And you do this one or two or three days, you start to feel feel uh, messages coming to you. It, they might be in the form of an idea, of a thought. They might be um, words that could pop up. And if that happens and you feel that urge, by all means, you can stop and you can uh, meditating and you can start writing down. As you're writing, try to stay in that meditative state, right? You might feel something is grabbing your hand and just moving really fast. That's okay. 
that happens. You might feel you're making stuff up. That's okay too. You might feel like nothing's coming. There's no message, no message at all. That's okay. Whatever your experience is, you gotta accept it and receive it, right? And the consistency of day after day of sitting in this way, turning it almost into a ritual of uh, opening yourself up and just listening. It's that consistency day after day, maybe by day two, maybe three, maybe by day seven or 10, you start hearing different voices and then you start writing. And sometimes you might write in a completely different voice other than your own. And you might have a follow-up question to your question. And then you switch over to write your question and suddenly that voice changes to yours. And then the answer comes in the other voice. That's okay. You might also find that there are multiple voices, multiple uh, cadences with which things are expressed and released to you. And that's okay too. But if you stay with it and if you stay connected to it, it is really beautiful because you'll start getting inspired in your own life to take actions that maybe otherwise you wouldn't have taken, you know, to create things that maybe you wouldn't be brave enough to create otherwise, right? This channeling allows us to co-create with the divine within us. It's the reason we came into the physical body. We take the human, we take the being, we close the gap, we close the gap of communication, and then we gain access to all sorts of inspired thoughts and ideas and words and, uh, and amazing projects that otherwise would not exist. And I believe if all of us do that on the planet, we create a world where everybody thrives. Everybody thrives. Thank you so much for coming to my talk.